Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthiers Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate the techniques that I use to prepare a blank, which is going to be used to make a guitar neck that features an angled headstock. And this will include the fabrication of a scarf joint. So let's jump in and get started. Before I actually head out to the workshop and start preparing the blank, I'm going to use a couple of animations to explain the two different methods that you can use to make a neck with an angled headstock. And we'll start with a blank that's been cut and plain to size. Next, I'll slice through the blank at an angle that's equal to the angle of my headstock. I'll then take that portion and flip it over and then tilt it at the angle of the headstock and then I'll bring the two together and glue them up. That's the scarf joint method. Another popular way of making a neck with an angled headstock is to carve the entire neck from a blank that is thick enough to encompass the entire length of the angled headstock. This method for making a neck is much easier since it involves fewer steps. In this illustration, I'm showing the profiles of two necks made using these different techniques. The top profile is what the neck would look like when carved from a thick slab of wood encompassing the entire length of the headstock. The lower uh, profile shows a neck made using a scarf joint. If you look closely at the neck which was carved from a thick blank of wood, you'll notice at the headstock the grain is running from the back of the headstock to the front of the headstock. This is known as short grain. And unfortunately, it can result in a weaker headstock, one which is susceptible to breakage if it's bumped, especially when string tension has been applied. If you don't believe me, just do a, a Google image search online of broken guitar headstocks, and you'll see plenty of photos of headstocks which have failed as a result of short grain. Now if we look at the profile of a headstock which was made using a scarf joint, we'll see that the grain runs the entire length of the headstock. This results in a much stronger headstock that's less susceptible to breakage. Now let's head out to the workshop and start preparing the blank. What I'll do is I'll grab a piece of suitable stock in order to cut the length of the blank, which in this case will be 32 inches. And the wood that I use uh, has to be absolutely flat with no bow, twist, or bending. And if I'm going to be using a wood like mahogany or limba, I'll make sure it's quarter sawn. Next, I'll run the top and the back through my planer, and I'll plane down the surface so that it's absolutely flat and has a final thickness of about one inch. Then I'll run both sides over the blades of my joiner and bring down the width of the blank to just under five inches. To mark the position of the angled cut that I'll make in order to uh, construct the scarf joint, I have to consult my plan to figure out exactly where that uh, angled cut will be positioned. Ultimately, the position of that angled cut will depend on the thickness of the blank and the angle of the headstock. It also will depend on the strategy that you want to use when doing the scarf joint. Uh, some folks like to do the scarf joint in the middle of the headstock. I prefer to do it uh, in the back contour because it's hidden from front view and I don't have to see uh, the scarf joint line across the face of the headstock. Even though I could cover it up with a cap, I don't often use caps on my headstocks. Since my blank is five inches wide, I have to make the cut on my bandsaw. In order to make the cut as smooth as possible, I have to make sure I'm using a sharp blade and that my bandsaw has been adjusted properly. The strength of a scarf joint is totally dependent upon how well the gluing surfaces are mated up, and that means they have to be absolutely flat. And to do this, I use a jig that I made myself. I call this jig my angled headstock scarf joint sanding jig, and I'll begin the process by attaching the jig to my workbench with a pair of screws that 
run through the top and into uh, a pair of T-nuts that are installed into the back of the tabletop. Then I'll install the uh, neck portion of the blank into the jig so that the angled portion of the cut is about a sixteenth of an inch out in front of the angled sides of the jig. And then once I have the blank positioned correctly in the jig, I'll tighten a pair of wood screws on the side which will pinch the blank into, into position and keep it from moving while I'm doing my uh, sanding operation. Next, I'll attach a uh, sheet of 60 grit sandpaper to the back of the jig's sanding sled. It only takes a couple of minutes to sand the angled portion of that uh, cut surface absolutely flat. Not only does the angled surface have to be absolutely flat, it has to be square with the rest of the neck, and I'll check that with a machinist square. Since I planed the blank at the beginning of this process, I know it's absolutely flat. So now I'm ready to bring the two pieces together to form the angled headstock. I'll start the process of attaching the angled headstock to the neck blank by first temporarily clamping it into position with a pair of squeeze clamps. This allows me to uh, make sure that I have the headstock uh, positioned correctly with respect to the blank. Then I'll drill a pair of pilot holes uh, toward the outer edges of the blank at about the midway point of the scarf joint. Next, I'll install a pair of wood screws into those holes, and these serve two purposes. One is to index the angled headstock to the neck, and the other is to keep the headstock from slipping as I glue it and clamp it. To prepare for gluing the two pieces together, I'll back out the wood screws and remove that angled headstock. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll make sure that the tips of those wood screws are extending just below the surface of the headstock in order to help index it with the neck blank holes. For gluing the scarf joint, I like to use Tight Bond Original Wood Glue. Uh, this wood glue seems to do the best job of uh, bringing the two pieces together. And once the glue is dried, and assuming the scarf cut was made properly, the joint will actually be stronger than the surrounding wood. So after I've applied the glue, I'll spread it around with a business card to make sure that I have a consistent layer of glue on that surface. Then I'll bring uh, the two pieces together using the tips of the screws uh, to guide me into those uh, uh, pilot holes that I drilled earlier. This will make sure that the uh, headstock is indexed to the uh, rest of the neck blank. And then I'll clamp it temporarily with squeeze clamps while I tighten those screws down into the wood. Now I'll clamp the uh, joint together with some C-clamps, and the key here is to apply just enough pr uh, clamping pressure to prevent the formation of an unsightly glue seam. However, you don't want to clamp it so tight as to starve the joint of the glue's bonding power. I'll leave the neck clamped and let the glue dry and cure for about 24 hours before I remove those wood screws. Then I'll take the blank over to my joiner and skim the top surface over the joiner blades so that later on, when I attach the fretboard, it has a nice flat surface to bond to. Okay, well that pretty well covers the processes that I use 
to prepare a blank that will be used for making a neck featuring an angled headstock. Now, I'm not actually going to get into the process of making the neck itself. I'll save that for another video down the road. But hopefully you found this video to be useful in preparing a blank with a scarf joint for an angled headstock. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions, of course, be sure to post those in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos uh, about guitar building and things of that nature, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it. You want to click that so that you'll be notified every time I post a new video. And of course, you can always go back in and watch videos that I've posted in the past. I've got several hundred videos on the subject of guitar making. So uh, until uh, the next episode, I hope you have a great weekend, a great week ahead, and we'll see you soon.